we are that which the brain produces. We are that which the brain produces. I am that which the brain produces. I am that which the brain produces. This is the story of the human being. This is the story of the human situation. This is the human program. The human program, in a way, is this, that we are what the brain produces. We are that which the brain produces. We are this experience that the brain produces and delivers to us. So the world and our life and what we are is simply produced by the brain and the nervous system, which means what we are, what people are, what we are, is produced by the human program. This is what the human program is. The human program is to live inside what the human program produces. We are what the brain produces. I am what the brain produces. I am what the human program delivers to me. I am what the human program is producing. And the human program is the totality of the machine or the totality of the, of the apparatus that is the interaction and the cooperation between nervous system and the brain. And because it is like this, because exactly and precisely because we are what is produced by the brain, exactly because we are what is being produced by the human program, we need uh, a stronger, more balanced basis inside ourselves. We need to know what we are because we need to know how we should relate to phenomena. This is the reason for spirituality, this is the reason for religion, this is the reason for relationship, it's the reason for therapy, it's the reason for anything actually. The fact that we as human beings, we need to know how we should relate to phenomena. We need to know how to relate to phenomena. We need to know how to relate to what is being produced by the brain. We need to know how to relate to how it is to be alive. We need to know how to relate to how it is to experience our existential, experiential situation. And because we need to know that, the question of who am I and what am I occurs. This is the reason why the question who am I occurs. This is the reason why the question what am I occurs. It occurs because we need to know or we want to know. We need to come home to ourselves, of course. We need to come home to ourselves, to what we are. But we also want to know what we are in the midst of brain phenomena, in the midst of mental activity, in the midst of consciousness, in the midst of what we are as consciousness. And I've said earlier before in uh, my I am that meditation that I am that which, I am that to which consciousness occurs which means that we are prior to consciousness. I mean, I am the being, the formless, nameless being, without consciousness in a way, that exists prior to consciousness. This uh, insight is, for me, it's inspired by the, the great Guru uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj, who is a real um, teacher on the 
science of on the science of what is before the human program you can say because he was the person who clearly exposed the para brahman state and the para brahman state is the state before god it's the state before um, genesis it's the state before the world comes into being so and he says that you know in indian uh, in the architecture of indian religion you can say that the atman the atman is the soul and the atman is a representation of god atman and brahman is the same but atman is your own or the human being's experience of himself as a soul in the world as a spiritual entity so to speak and god is of course god god is brahman god is brahman brahman and god is everything that we can see the world as it is every phenomenon that we can perceive including perception itself is brahman and para brahman is that which can perceive perception para brahman is that which knows that perception occurs para brahman is that which registers and knows that perception and existence and consciousness occurs so nisargadatta maharaj says that if you donate atman you will get brahman if you donate brahman you will get para brahman and to him to nisargadatta the para brahman is the ultimate state to nisargadatta the para brahman is the ultimate state because it is that which makes perception possible the thing prior to consciousness i am that which is prior to my i am that experience i am that which is prior to my i am that experience and this is the para brahman i am that which is prior to my i am that experience because i have an i am that experience right but why do i have that well because there's something there to experience the fact that i have an i am that experience so this is science this is this is hardcore science this is not mumble jumble spirituality this is um dissection i mean this is surgery surgical <laughs> investigation this is uh this self inquiry is an investigation that is or it should be it should be the most precise and most sober and most clear cut investigation that it's possible to to do and that's what what it is that's what that's what this really is and that's why this is important it's important to to get this or to understand this because it makes human life and the knowledge of ourselves and our ability to to create a better world uh, it makes that so much more possible everything falls into place in a way because you can see the map of everything i have seen this map since i was 26 years old uh, that's what happened to me is um, 26 27 years old uh, it all i understood everything in a way and all my all my work as a writer uh, philosopher poet came out like this about this and then it was like that for 10 years and then i after a while i succumbed to the craziness of the world i succumbed to the non knowledge or i succumbed to the ignorance of the world because i gave up I gave up being clever I gave up being smart because no one else understood this no one else saw this everyone else was lost in the identity self you know in the psychological self everyone else was lost in the psychological self so I thought okay never mind I'm not going to get anywhere with my <laughs> with my new discovery because <laughs> because no one understand it and they won't listen to it and it it just has to be my secret and I just have to pretend that I'm but I'm not here in a way you know because it was painful to be in social relationships with people who didn't know anything about these things but and then of course 
many other things happened, trauma, breakdown in a way. And then I thought that, all right, let's go back to what I was. Let's go back to the thing that I saw. Let's go back to what I understood. What if my problems came simply because I gave up? What if my problems came simply because I gave in? What if my problems came simply because I succumbed to what other people thought? Which means that I succumbed to Maya, you know, as they say in Buddhist terminology, I succumbed to ignorance in a way. I succumbed to, I gave in to the ignorant versions of what we call knowledge or self knowledge in a way. Well, this sentence was a little bit out of line, I guess. But okay, never mind. Sometimes we can say things like that. But anyway, when I met Nisargadatta, so to speak, so through internet, I understood that, wow, this is a man who speaks about the same thing. This is a man who, under- who speaks about the same essence that underlies eternity. Or here is the person who speaks about the same essence that, that is eternity. Uh, my slogan when I was 26, 27, 28, or 35 years old, was eternity has begun. Eternity has begun. And that eternity which had begun was the entity in the human being that was in a way not affected by time. Uh, I saw the timeless aspect of us, and I saw the timeless aspect of everything. I saw the timeless aspect of the world. And our own psychological relationship to time, or our own psychological relationship to the phenomenons that occur and appear in time, which of course means in the mind, because perception is time, or time lives in perception. So perception is time, or time is what is being perceived. Time is constituted by the perception of phenomenons in space. Um, Well, but anyway, the conclusion to this talk is that we are what the brain produces. We cannot help that. We are what the brain produces because we are living inside the human program. And this is, as as I've said, exactly why and precisely why we need a more solid foundation. We need a more we need a foundation that seems true to our inner being in a way. And the foundation that seems true to our inner being is in my mind this because there is an aspect of us that exists before consciousness in a way. Of course that which exists prior to consciousness is perceived, right? So it exists within consciousness, you can say that, and that's why it's important to say that we are what the brain produces, because it's very easy to to make a tautology, or I mean to say something um, self-contradictory. And self-contradiction is, of course, everywhere, and that's all right, no problem about it. What we need is to find a foundation Uh, in which we feel comfortable. What we need, the whole question about the search for the self, or the whole purpose of the investigation of the human mind, psyche, and the human self, is to find a foundation that feels comfortable for us, that frees us, that liberates us. You can talk about enlightenment all you want, but many people are enlightened, I mean, it's not difficult to get enlightenment, you know. Uh, I was enlightened <laughs> 30 years ago, but because I forgot all about it, because no one else seemed to have it, then I, I gave in to social, the social demands of, of, um, of unification within ignorance. But then I gave that up and came back to my own seeing again, and that feels actually better. <laughs> yeah, well, never mind. But 
The reason why we need to talk about this is because we want to find a foundation in ourselves that feels comfortable and that feels free, freeing and that feels liberating, uh, freeing and comfortable for us. And of course that feels true, because we want to live in something that we consider to be true. We want to live inside a model that seems true to us that gives us the experience of being connected to the right thing. And everything which is heart, soul, inner child, consciousness, the human program, what the brain produces, feeling, all of these things are important and they are there, but I think that there's something deeper than that, and that the the thing that is deeper than that is that which is prior to the I am experience, the thing that is prior to consciousness, the thing that makes perception possible. So if we can see this so-called Parabrahman state, the, the state in us, in us which is unborn, so to speak, the, the aspect of us that is just a human soul floating in space, floating in time, timeless, formless, like the Tao, you know, the Chinese Tao. Or as they say in Japanese Zen, that the true man and the true Buddha is one and the same. It is a, a unified thing, it's an entity, it's not two things. The true Buddha and the true man is one and the same. The true Buddha has always been the true man, and the true man has always been the true Buddha. This is one and the same thing. But because people have not found it, because we have not yet realized, because we have not yet realized what we are in our deepest self, in our deepest selves, then we haven't seen that the true man is the true Buddha, or the true Buddha is the true man. And it is the same thing. And that essence is a part of us. That essence is a part of what we are. And because that essence is a part of what we are, when we identify with it, or when we come closer to that realization, we feel much better in our life, in our situation, because our foundation is better, our foundation is something that is released and breathing and free, and it is not confined to the mind-brain phenomena. It is not confined to the brain states. It is not confined to what we experience through perception, to what we think, to what we feel. I mean, this is something that transcends, that goes beyond what we think and what we feel. So if you want to find your true Buddha in you, then you will find the true man or the true woman. I mean, you will find the true human soul in yourself if you find the true Buddha inside yourself, because you have it. We all have it. And the practice of self-inquiry, or self-inquiry, self-inquiry, is to see what we are. And in order to see what we are, we have to see what we are not. And what we are not is, of course, this endless chatter of thought and mind activity, which is racing all over the mental landscape, you know, that we have when we are identified with the mind. So the whole thing is to get out of the mind, the identification that points to the mind essence, because when we identify as the psychological self, when we identify as the psychological self or the mind, or with thinking, then we are lost, well, then our position becomes much weaker, because we are in the grip of the false self, in a way. We are in the grip of the psychological self, and there is no peace there, there is no... Um, there is no fulfillment there, there is no completion there, there is no completion in the psychological self. So the psychological self is an entity that swirls around in our more, in our bigger uh, awareness situation, in a way. 
So, yes, we cannot deny the fact that we are what the brain produces, but we do also possess the intellect and the instruments and the creativity and the the faculties that makes us realize that, well, but I'm something else than that too. I can see what lies behind. I am I can see what I was before this brain thing took over. I could see what I was before this brain thing came into being and took over my life, so to speak. <laughs> I can see what I was before my brain and my mind hijacked my existence and my interpretations of the world. I can see and feel and experience what I was and what I am prior to the mind-brain uh, hijacking, uh, prior to the mind-brain activity uh, structure. You know, the mind-brain psychological self-activity is something that exists. And in order to get out of that, you have to see that from the outside. You have to see your brain activity from the outside. When you see that brain activity from the outside, then you are approaching <coughs> the Paragraman state. And when you abide in there, as the great Bhagavan Maharshi says, when you abide in your true self, when you abide in your inner self, when you abide in your inner self, then slowly you will get the peace and the clarity, clarity to not only uh, have the pleasure of the experience of abiding in your own inner self, but you will also be able to see anything else that happens outside the inner self. You will see the map of the mental situation of mankind. You will see the map of the situation of the mental psychological domain of the human being. You will see yourself as something or someone located in your inner self which can see view and understand and acknowledge all the fact all the things that are being produced by the brain or all the things that are being produced by the human program so we live in the human program and the best thing that we can do for ourselves and for other people and for the world for the sake of knowledge is to understand the human program to see the human program in its totality to understand the whole structure of it, the architecture of it, you know, and to find the way that seems most appropriate for our existence within it, within the world, within the mind, within the brain, within the human program, within ourselves. Okay, thank you.